This is your Solana Daily Debrief. It's the 5th of July and everything is rather red. Let's quickly go to CoinGecko and 24 hours is something starting to kind of bounce up. But in general, there's it's a sea of red. It's a major sea of red. And there was a little bit of bullish sentiment in the past, like a week ago, and now it's kind of reversed. So right now we'll go through it, but essentially this is not the time, in my opinion, to be putting on any sort of leverage, not financial advice, just people are going to get absolutely destroyed. We'll go over that shortly though. We can see that uh, Bitcoin has bounced slightly. It went down to like 54,000 something or 53,900 ish. And Ethereum's also bounced. It went down quite low, another $130 lower. And there's been quite a few others as well. Solana made down to like, I think 126 or thereabouts, 122. So that was pretty decent in terms of crashing. And that was earlier this morning. But we'll start off randomly with just some world news. There is now a new prime minister in the UK, and this is Keir Stammer. And this is a new party. It was conservative. Now it's Labour. I have no idea if they have any goals with crypto. The UK elections are nowhere near as interesting as the US. Just putting on your radar, just so you're aware that there's been some changes in the one of the big countries of the world. No actual crypto predictions. Same pump, 48,000 for BTC, 2.5K for ETH, $90 for Solana, but also says $45,000 potentially and not 48K. 45K should be rock solid though. Now what's actually happened in the markets are massive liquidations. So there's something called cascading liquidations. So when liquidations start, when people leverage and they run out of collateral, they lose their position and it drops down and then it sells and it sells and you basically get something that just drops faster and faster and faster. Now this has been the biggest liquidation since the infamous FTX collapse. It's almost basically the same. There's also, as we know, there's $3.5 billion worth of seized Bitcoin. That's uh, Germany's trying to sell. Mt. Gox begins paying back $8.5 billion worth of Bitcoin to creditors as well. And we can see all this happen. So it's no wonder that this is actually happening. Just what we needed to see was we had technical analysis that was indicating upwards. And then the stuff started to move on chain. And the whales were like, well, why would we actually start buying when there's all the supply coming on? So Mt. Gox is transferring to exchanges to try and sell this. There's another massive transfer here. And of course, some people are just going to deem this as FUD. I don't agree with this take, but I'm just pointing it out. So this is from Ash Crypto. So we know that a large amount of BTC has been repaid. However, this is going to be from July to October. And also mentioned down here, basically holders are already up 100x. Let's assume 50% of the coins will be sold. We have no idea how many will be sold but probably more than that, to be honest. And the total selling amount would be 2.1 billion. Right now, the market can handle 6 to 10K BTC sell pressure as the ETF inflows are low. However, as I showed you yesterday, there's actually quite a decent amount of sell pressure already from the miners and whales and such. So overall, like to be really honest, like it is very, very bearish for the short term until we kind of get down to a section like 45K if it goes at low, of course, once we get down there and then start to rebuild. And then rebooting from there would be, I would imagine, fairly quick. At the same time, you have to also keep in mind the US government was selling 30,000 Bitcoin, 660 million at the time. This is March 2023. They sold and then up we went. It's a little bit of a different time though. So what I'm kind of expecting is, yes, we go down. We go down in a fairly brutal way. And then people realize, you know, this is worth holding and it starts to bid back up by the big whales. Quinton says this is a bear trap. So just keep in mind, if you think you're going to short it right now, I think it's a bit, it's a bit dangerous. Even longing, it's a bit dangerous. It's boring, but it's tried and tested. If you want more of that particular token, whatever it is, just dollar cost average. Remember, we always have these drawdowns. Like these are significant drawdowns, 38%, 38, 36, 29 so if we draw down 20% or 30%, it's not uncommon. It happens multiple times a cycle. Also, as measured peak to peak, BTC is still outperforming the last two cycles. Uh, in terms of like timing and whatnot, we are still doing fine. If it was 42K, then we'd be basically in line with the previous cycle. Cadence is 
adding to his positions. Plenty of people out there adding to their positions. I think the major point is don't add with leverage. Just add just gently. That's probably the safest thing. Roll Paul, one of the goats. His system is just simple. Chill. Don't frick this up. No leverage, no FOMO, and just zoom out. As long as you are not, you know, borrowing a massive amount of USDC or something from your tokens and, you know, risk being liquidated, you will be fine, in my opinion. Here's another bit of just general bullish news on the fact that overall, like this market's looking really, really good. So really, when Germany and the US government and Mt. Gox are done, it will clear the last overhang. Now, this could take months, September, October. The stock market's doing well. Gold's close to all-time high. There's a lot of great stuff actually happening. There's just major whales selling right now. And these whales happen to be not your typical Bitcoin maxis in any way. They are an indebted company or a bankrupt company and governments. So essentially, this is what I would call the boring zone and the banana zone, just as Quinton says. I have been wanting to cover meme coins more. The issue with meme coins is there's so many out there and I just... Picking winners, it's really difficult. More on that in another video, but long story short, I'm basically not gonna cover them. It's too much risk. Instead, during this boring zone, just go and airdrop farm, just go and use different dApps, even use different dApps on different blockchains. That's fine, because the banana zone is coming, and when this comes, this is when we wanna take some of the airdrop rewards, rotate them to USDC, and start deploying capital, in my opinion. Mentioning this again, but 182 days sideways chop, 2016, 161, days 2020 and thus far we're 76 days it does get shorter and shorter but i would say around breakpoint we should be starting to do better now some bullish news here from taiwan 10 billion dollar taiwan mobile applies and gets a bitcoin and crypto exchange license unsure exactly what they're going to plan here but as bigger countries or you know more tech savvy populations start to get these sort of things this brings back the bull market now let's get away from price for a little bit and let's start looking at some actual crypto opportunities. Randomly, even though I have no development skills, I get a lot of people pinging me for jobs. Uh, don't ping me for jobs, I can't help you. What you can do though, is if you're a developer looking for a job in crypto, then join the Talent Olympics. You complete challenges, earn prizes, land a job based on your proof of work. July 11th to 14th, this is via Super Team. This is really, really smart. 45 plus hiring partners, 20K USD prize pool. And then you can go and get yourself a six-figure job. So let's see where the actual link is. Click on this. There's a decent number of people interested. We will keep an eye on this. So you complete these challenges, you earn prizes, and you get a full-time job. At least you get interviews for these full-time jobs. And there are a lot of dApps out there that need talented people. This is the smartest way to get them. Now let's go into Jupiter Exchange and their active staking rewards. So this is from Slog, and this was done just before like the announcement. So it's a bit of a thread. This is the simplified version, but we'll go over individually. So you can preview your active staking reward allocations before claiming on Saturday, 1 p.m. at UTC. These tokens will be claimable for one month ending August 6th at 1 p.m. So I'll put this into the calendar or someone from Team Will so you know that you have to claim, you have to check your wallets before this date. Also, you need to actually claim the active staking rewards. Your dupe will be automatically staked while the other tokens will be sent to your wallet and we've published a detailed post here basically you can read through it but essentially obviously the more you voted and the more tokens you have the more allocation you actually got so each proposal other than the three trial working group proposals were allocated the same amount of total rewards so effectively the total asr pool is divided by seven to allocate to each proposal while it's further divided by three to allocate to each trial wd proposal so you just go to vote.dupe.ag and you go and connect your wallet this is just a tutorial wallet with not a lot of dupe in it. You can see I can claim this in 23 hours. Not a whole lot to claim, but essentially we're looking at like over 22% if you actually voted in every single thing. 22% for just a few months work of just voting. Very, very decent. Now, I don't know how it works exactly if you've actually unstaked your dupe. So if we just go here straight to vote.dupe.ag, you can see I've got 45 if I unstake, I don't know, maybe if I unstake some of them, then there's something along the lines of you have to wait until this has actually finished unstaking before you can claim your dupe rewards. I'm not entirely sure how it's done, but one of my researchers suggests that you just leave some state. So I'm unstaking 10 and we'll 
We'll see if we can work out how it kind of works and I'll update you regarding that on Monday. Now some community news. I put this actually onto YouTube just as a post and I also put it in a portal that I created in Discover. If you haven't heard about Discover, go check out my podcast with Rick Porter, the co-founder of Discover. It's a platform I'll be using far more and just what things I'm kind of jumping into, I'll mention in there and then they'll also go into the videos, of course. But this pool here is well worth jumping into. It's really, really decent. The only thing I don't like about it is the fact that it's not in Meteora, so we're not getting any Meteora points. The PYUSD incentives have been increased again. Massive. I don't know, like, why they're getting such crazy sponsorship from PayPal, but it is decent. So app.comino.finance, of course. Go ahead, connect your wallet, connect my Soulflare, auto connect and connect. So there's a couple of things that I would like to do. And of course, I would actually like to go and borrow some PYUSD, but we can't. There's nothing available, so we can't actually borrow. The capacity is 34 cents, and I don't know when they're going to lift this. However, also from yesterday, the liquidation LTV has changed. So this was 65%, now it's 75. That was 45, now it's 35. So I'm far more excited for this because this is a better system. It should be even higher than that, in my opinion. I think this should be 80 and I think this should be 70, maybe even 75. Anyway, so we go up the top because we're not going to worry about that because we can't actually participate. But we go up the top here and then we can enter into this pool. So incentives are currently 30%. It has dropped down. It was like 160 when I first started. As soon as this TVL gets to 5 million, of course, it's going to be 20%. And then as soon as it gets to 10 million, as soon as it's full, assuming this doesn't change, it's basically going to be 10%. But that's still really decent because if we go back to liquidity and we look at the actual stable pool, we can see traditionally they don't get very much in terms of actual yield because although there's um, decent TVL, the fee structure in these pools, it's tiny. It's 0.01%, which is good. It means you can use the blockchain and it doesn't cost you very much to go in between assets. Same with this one, it's 0.01%. But of course, PayPal is just actually promoting getting this token used actively. So right now, if you've got the liquidity available, jump into this pool, in my opinion, because it's just outperforming at present. It's outperforming basically all of the supply APYs with USD. Just a reminder, and I'll remind you every day, Soulflare is my wallet of choice. Daily prizes, if you just go into a swap, you can use either here, or you can also go and use your mobile phone. Just jump to the swap menu here. We've got a little bit of USDC, so we can go and swap $5, $10, $20, or whatever you want. Go and buy some Sol, just to the swap. And every time you do a swap, you have some sort of ticket in the daily prizes. And there is that grand prize of 15K. In total, there's $30,000 worth of prizes. Next thing we have is from the Send coin. They've got a new blink. It says, remember, every blink interaction counts. Send it. So claim rent deposit from your own wallet by closing empty token accounts through this blink or info so we can just go sign transaction and if we okay we're just going to link to backpack and not soulflare basically if we can sign transaction we can close token accounts with zero balance so if we jump into this one probably going to have some right down the bottom here with i have quite a few here with zero balance they will close i'll get back soul and maybe because I've interacted with this, maybe there'll be an airdrop of their send coin when it happens. This is not high on my alpha list though, to be perfectly honest. I'm just more putting it on your radar. Actionables, complete at least one swap in Soulfly Wallet every day. Check out the PYUSD and USDC incentivized LP on Camino. It's very decent. Also, if you're holding stables, check out Camino's PYUSD lending APY. What you may be keen to do is if you have some USDC, go and swap it for PYUSD and then just lend it out if you don't want to actually jump into the pool. The pool's better though, but you may want to do this. DCA Soul on dupe.ag and stake it with validate.com. A lot of people want Soul at a cheaper price. Of course, this is not financial advice, but the bull market is not over. It's barely made a dent. Solana to $1,000 is my opinion. Place buy orders at a lower price at phoenix.trade as well, if you're keen. Just these are more like stink bits, like $80, $90, $70. If they don't fill and then all of a sudden souls back around $200, just claim back your USDC. You can also use Drift if you're keen, but I do like Phoenix Trade for this. And my researcher says, leave some dupe staked if you're unstaking all of your dupe. This will help you with active staking rewards, apparently. 
Now our airdrop actionables, gonna keep on mentioning this maybe for a few more days and then just give you a break. Debridge 20 to 30K points. Use Cube Exchange, check in daily, do active tasks, use my referral link. Register all your meme coin wallets with Holdium. Sign up for Moonwalk's Ascent. And low in terms of alpha, but close a few token accounts via the Send Coins link. That's all for today. If you liked it, like it. If you loved it, subscribe. And also I've got another video coming out today on branding. So make sure you watch that. I'll catch you in that video. Thank <laughs> you.